this is Allie. And Georgia. And this is Slumber Party. Now, you might know us from the internet. We once made a drink called the McNuggetini, and through a series of events, we're now on Cooking Channel on a show called Unique Sweets and a web series called Classy Ladies. But this is our podcast where we sit in a pillow fort in Allie's apartment in our pajamas with a guest. There's jelly beans. There's white wine spritzers. There's ghost stories. There's prank stories. Seriously, we're in a pillow fort. I'm wearing pajamas right now. There's nothing <laughs> mature about it. It's like a grown-up slumber party. For our first episode, we have a, the wonderful Kulat Vilaisak from TV and comedy. She is also in a onesie. So we're going to talk to her about growing up and about um, some ghost stories. Just slumber party stuff. Y'all get comfortable. Maybe, we're, maybe we'll freeze her bra. Yeah, maybe not. Um, Allie, what are you drinking? I'm having a really disgusting wine spritzer, Georgia. <laughs> um, we somehow I got a hold of this um wine that is supposed to be angel food flavored, Ugh. which is all kinds of bad ideas in Ugh. a bottle, and it's screw cap, which is it's a, from like screw. a reputable vineyard, but it it seemed like a bad idea, and I gave it the benefit of the doubt, and it's disgusting. It's terrible, but we mixed it with some kombucha. Homemade kombucha, right, Allie? No, we use cherry soda because the kombucha smells oh, like a toilet. Me- oh, <laughs> I thought this had kombucha in it. Oh, no. So this is what. So we're having essentially um, really terrible wine spritzers. We have a jar full of jelly beans and some red vines, and we're in a pillow fort in my living room. Yeah, and shit's awesome. It is kind of the best day. Doesn't ever. really. And get- we're in pajamas. I'm in pajamas right now. Uh, I slept in this shirt. The <laughs> shirt that I'm wearing right now. I slept in this. <laughs> I'm not wearing a bra. It's awesome, and it's wonderful. Why am I wearing one? I don't know why the fuck you're wearing a bra. Oh, Take it God. off. God. No one wants to see that. No one can see that. Okay. Um, okay, so this, we're, we're going to be doing this podcast, and it's going to be loosely based on, like, a childhood slumber party. So we'll ask questions like truth or dare style questions and prank stories and just fun stuff like that. We're going to get hells intimate, y'all. We're going to get so intimate. We're we going to put your underwear in the freezer if you fall asleep. So make sure you don't fall asleep. It's really hot in this pillow it's fort, so and that sounds good. amazing to <laughs> have frozen underpants. <laughs> Okay, All right. so this week, Georgia. Yeah. Let's okay. Talk. Let's, what did you learn this week? One thing I learned this week. Well, you know, I'm reading um, that punk rock book. Oh yeah, what's called it called? Please Kill Me, and it's by Legs McNeil, who was like this amazing writer of the like 70s punk rock New York scene. Okay. Right, like Iggy and Ramones and everything. I learned that they cremated Sid's body and dumped it over Nancy's grave. What? Yeah, did you know that? No! First of all, they don't think that Na- that Nancy was killed by Sid. Like, everyone in the scene is like, no, that was this crazy drug dealer. <gasps> like, it's known. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um. So, but when Sid died, like, a week or two later, mm-hmm. they cremated him and snuck over the cemetery gate because Nancy was Jewish and her parents were like, get the fucking creep away from me. <gasps> in the movie, Sid and Nancy, her, the mom trips in the airport and dumps the ashes everywhere. But you, you know what's weird? What? If that was for just for the movie. Why did they do that? They do fake things in movies. That's all kinds of bullshit. Yeah, weird, right? That's not punk rock. No. In the end, they're, everyone's alive and they ride off in the sunset <laughs> and convertible and yeah. she gets a makeover. Fine. What? No. Yeah. I Can I tell you that I saw that movie when I was a kid? We had two fish and we named them Sid and Nancy. Because my sister, my older sister was like kind of punk and she was a troublemaker. So she she taught us all kinds of things about like metal and punk that we shouldn't know at like seven. Right. But um. I don't remember the end of that movie, and I wonder if it's because it was turned off before things got really bad. Before it got real. It was just a love story in your mind then. No one died. Yeah, I, I can't remember that he he died like a week later. I just remember he comes down the steps singing. That's I guess, right. Yeah, but I guess he's dead then. He's in he heaven. He died of a drug overdose. Well, why why do they scatter his ashes on her grave? What if she was like, ugh, get this off me? No, because they were in love. Uh, they were like madly. No, I, I think I believe it. I think they were really in love, and I think, Yeah. So Would you that. want your ashes on someone else's grave? Would you want to... No? Yeah, fuck it. I mean, you're dead. Yeah. Who gives a shit? I don't think anyone should... I don't understand why anyone buries anyone anymore. I don't either. My dad and I were talking about that he wants to be at the very top of a mausoleum when he dies so that no one can pee on his grave. And I'm like, why the... F- dad, who have you pissed off <laughs> that they want to pee on your grave? <laughs> Do you want to hear something terrible? Yeah. I hate, hated my grandma. She was the biggest... C word, and I don't. You say that very often. What was what was the nickname you called her? Oh, we called her Grandma Potamus because she was morbidly <laughs> obese. She was a terrible woman. She was a tyrant, and everyone hated. Yeah. She was like the evil matriarch, okay, like yeah. in a movie. But um, I always told my sisters that when she died, I would I would dance on her grave for a thousand dollars. I didn't care. I would do it, and I'm not a very malicious person. But I was like, no. I do it. She was buried in a mausoleum, and I would have to pull a Lionel Richie to do that. And I think she did. I think she did that on purpose. Do it. 
Ugh. Well, I'll, I'll hold you up like and you can tap dance on I'll, the side of the wall i'll do it yeah. i'll get some kind of ladder arrangement <laughs> i'll get get me like a weird pulley like a rock climbers i'll be like play done all right what's your what did you learn this week oh this is doesn't have anything to do with corpses and now Good. i feel weird but it does have to do with um being possessed by demons kind of but um i learned the word lycanthropy do you know that word? I don't. What does that mean? I thought that, do you, I, I feel like other people know this and I didn't, but um, lycanthropy is the act of turning into a werewolf. There's a word for oh. that. Yeah. Like it, like it sounds like a skin condition. Like I got diagnosed with lycanthropy, <laughs> but it's really when you start to like sprout hair all over your body. People, this isn't like, this isn't a fairy tale thing. Like when people actually get this issue of spreading hair. No, 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 no. But when you actually turn into a, a oh. half man, half wolf, and you start killing people and like raping children and then e- and eating their body do parts, rape children. I bet. I don't think they have a lot of scruples. Okay. I think they do all kinds well, of things. Since she nodded her head that she knows what we're talking about, let's yeah. um, introduce our guest, our very first guest on our very first podcast for Slumber Party with Ali in Georgia. We're introducing Kulap, who we adore. She's an actress, a comedian. She does uh, Who Charted, which is the most awesome podcast ever. Yeah. Do you, are you going to say her last name? Villa Check. Villa Check. Fuck. Yeah, I'm I Polish. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm Polish, so that's why I that's love totally it. why I did that. I have no Vila excuse. Sock. <laughs> Vila, can you say it? Vila Sock. Oh, I think Vila 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 Hello, ladies. I'm so excited. I like how this is a BYO surname party. <laughs> like, bring your say your own surname when you get here. We're not. You know, it. you're giving me a lot. You're giving me. I've got a huge, huge thing here of a uh, jar, glass jar filled with uh, good jelly beans, big ones. Yeah. Yep. Red vines in front of me. I have a drink. I'm in a pillow blanket fort. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> the best pajamas I've ever seen in my life. I'm in. A onesie. Yeah. Yep. She's in a onesie. Collab seemed like an, in a onesie that's like perfect for an infant, only she has like uh, it unbuttoned to reveal like these <laughs> yeah. amazing bosoms. It's the There's most confusing. Going on in this I, I'm heaving a little. <laughs> yeah. It's the most confusing visual and it's gorgeous. So, Collab, what did you learn this week? Did you learn anything? Oh, did I learn anything this week? Oh, I learned um, that I. Uh, af- Someone who I admire, and I'm a huge comic book nerd, and uh, there's a, a comic book writer named Gail Simone who I love. She wrote, she wrote uh, her her Wonder Woman is like um, one of my favorite of all nice. times, right? So she uh, surprised me by making me a character in Bad Girl, <gasps> and uh, my husband is uh, Sir Scott Ackerman, oh. and he, he 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 she had talked to him about it, and. Um, they just kept this like awesome surprise. And oh so I'm like God. reading it. Oh and I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> it's just jarring because my name is Cool Up. Oh, and, my God. Uh, yeah. and, and she, the, the character is like, blah, blah, blah. Don't you think Cool Up? And I was like, <gasps> oh, oh. How did, was, did he know her? Like, are they? We know her from, I, I guess she listened to the podcast. Oh. She listened to Scott's podcast, Comedy Bang Bang, yeah. I think for a while. And then we just have just become friends through the years, like certain comic cons. And she's seen wow. seen shows at the UCB and stuff. Did so. it come out this week? It came out this week. What, what is, is your character It's do? called Batgirl. I, um, it's Batgirl number 10. It's for the new 52 <laughs> DC. Oh, God. <laughs> so, it's, so it's out now. So people who have like just on like they can't handle their crushes on you can go read that yeah and beat off to that and i am well i'm the i think the first character who's um who's uh like comic boobs are smaller than my actual boobs because <gasps> <laughs> it's done by a woman probably right <laughs> you have any idea how much i wish i had a slide whistle right now <laughs> like put that on our notes something i really we need that we'll fully that in what does your yeah. character do in it um i'm a uh, I so far is revealed that I uh, am like I think like a bad vigilante. Wow! Yeah, and in a gang. So far, me, you're going to be in more. Yeah, apparently. Oh my god! And my full apparently my full name's going to come out. No. <laughs> in the character's lotion. Oh, oh my wow. god! Wow! Tell us a little bit about your background because I think it's fascinating. Um, my family is from Laos, mm-hmm. and um, I am first generation, born in America. I uh, so my mom came from a Thai refugee camp. She escaped from Laos, and I think it was post Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. And so, um, within a month of her coming to America to Washington D.C., she had me. Holy within a month, crap. so she traveled like with eight months of Kulap in her. Yeah, being yeah. in a refugee camp, pregnant. 
I yeah. just gotta say. That's where I was conceived, bitches. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, that's so sexy. I Probably in a tent like the one engineer oh. Dustin's in right now. <laughs> oh, that, that is the sexiest thing I've ever that's heard. That's a pretty hot camp romance. So you went to, to fashion school and then were you just like, I, enough with these, enough with these fashion people, I'm not into it. Yeah, I mean, it's like fashion people. It's like, because I, I went for the business of fashion and that's like a whole other type of crazy. But you love gays. So it seems I like fashion too. would be a great place for that. That's true. I do love the gays. <laughs> <laughs> Team gay as you, <laughs> as you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and also, because, you know, I kind of was like, my mom always said, like, if you don't like my rules, then leave. And I was like, great. <laughs> like you, that, when you that's came the here, plan. Did but, you know anyone in Los Angeles? No. Oh did you, really? Did you come here on purpose to kind of be like, I'm going to get out of here? I came here. We yeah, asked to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I was like, well, California sounds awesome. I like fashion. I love to shop. Ugh. Here we go. And then I just kind of, I kind of went. And those, I think my mom was so shocked that I actually did it. Those first couple of years in Los Angeles when you don't know anyone are just terrifying. Rough. Yeah. We've How did you meet it. friends when you first came here? I, um, I was set up by Fitum with like three other girls who went to the school. So that's basically how like just fit them. But fit them people are weird. Like if you go downtown, the campus is so beautiful and there's this huge lawn, but no one's sitting on it because they're wearing like short skirts oh, and like <laughs> high heels. Um, oh, it's a God. yeah, it's wasted lawn. It's like a fashion show every day, probably. Yeah. yeah and is. there were so yeah. many gay guys. <laughs> there was like, no, I think I dated a guy and I think he was bi. <laughs> You, like, you think? Yeah. You think? <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into the comedy? A beautiful there? blonde fade. <laughs> um, <laughs> <You had> a <laughs> beautiful blonde fade. <laughs> I don't know. I did it a bi guy. skin. You know how I found out he was bi? Is he kept using all of my face creams and then we were supposed to go to a wedding in Toronto and the night before the wedding he admitted to me that he had a four year affair with a groom <laughs> how long have you been dating him <sighs> for three years oh my god <laughs> oh, hey, something you want to tell theater. you I didn't get that I didn't understand the fact that he was so into musical theater um, wait but my husband's really into musical theater I, it's not it's definitely not like a it's not a, a positive you know correlation but okay so but I still want to know how you went from fashion to comedy because you're think, so funny I remember the first time I ever saw you before I ever met you I think you were on the MTV Music Awards no something. do you remember that that was like years ago you Gosh. were in the uh, you were doing a, some gig in the audience I think with Paul Russ but I'm not sure or with Neil Campbell uh, people. Um, anyway but I remember being someone was like that's cool up she's <laughs> hilarious and I was like I love what she's doing oh was that with the human giant guys when Probably. I pretended to be pregnant and so. and Rob Rob Hebel pretends to give <laughs> <laughs> to give birth to my baby. I oh my think god! That, I think that was my intro to you. And I'm intro. I'm interrupting their magic show. I think that was my and intro. And then to he, you. he he delivers my baby, and then my baby has a playing card on it, and he goes, "Is that your card?" Oh <laughs> my god! Stage. Uh, how fun! It was super fun. And how I like to play those things is to be super realistic, not funny at all, oh. just fully like. I'm dying and I'm having a baby. Oh I like to scare anyone that's around me when I do those types of bit. I think that's that terrifies like, I like hyper, me. Hyper realism. How, so how did you get into acting then? When when did you decide to Second do Second City. Really? Yeah, Second City LA. Um, you guys, a little insight. I was in speech. Oh, uh, were you? I was a humorous interpretation. Oh my god. <laughs> That makes so much sense. So, I was thematic and true. Of course you, you were. You know why? Because we got a binder and we didn't have to memorize stuff. You did have yeah. binders. Wow. This is like this is like hardcore like out. school nerd stuff. But in speech class, you had to like pick ex like um, impromptu. You'd have to pick like Lincoln Douglas. And thematic interpretation got a binder where you could look at notes. And I was like, that's not fair. I'm doing that one. <laughs> and um, but humorous interp, you had to have several characters. Yes, and then um, <laughs> when you did different characters, like you were supposed to go like different levels. Like the old Asian lady would be down here. Ho oh, hello, how do you? And then up here could be the <laughs> the. the English man. <laughs> so you're just like, you look like this schizophrenic idiot oh <laughs> switching between the two. Oh, high school. Yeah, Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Dress up like young business professionals. I feel Go like to I'd some be, random high school. I'd be in a better place right now if I had if I had participated in stuff like what you guys are talking about. Really? Do you want to hear, do you want to have a truth bomb? My speech class was totally formative, 
formative in my critical thinking and writing skills. And I hated the woman. Hate Mrs. Stark. I'm pretty sure she's dead. I think she died of just bad bile. But she, um, the actual critical thinking skills and having to like present that to a room full of assholes on a Saturday morning in your right business attire. There's something about that that sharpens you. Wow. But you did. So you did. Essentially, you did like stand up when you were in high school in the speech class. <laughs> Was it though? I mean, yeah. You were standing up. Can we talk about um, ghost stories? Yeah, let's yeah, go, let's let's go to a it. slumber party topic and let's sure. talk about ghost stories because I heard you have one. <gasps> well, I heard who is of uh, the two okay. of you who doesn't believe? I, I Georgia, that's me. I want to believe so much in ghosts, and I want, and so I, I always ask people their stories to be convinced. But Allie is just like sold on it. Oh, ghosts are mad real. Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why I think that. Okay, do you know how? Do you have any idea how many radio waves are in this room right now? Like, if you turn on a radio, you could get any station. Your phone is is co- is collecting information. So who's to say that there are ghosties everywhere and we just that don't have the antenna to, to see them? I don't see A to ghosties. B in that. There's things in the air that we uh, can't detect that are like radios that have been around since like like for a hundred years. To do with dead people? Sure, it does. I mean, haven't you ever thought about someone and then a minute later they call or text you? Mm-hmm. I think there's all sorts of weird telepathic shit and weird like spirits and consciousness that we just can't detect yet. And I think the ghosties are part of that. And I believe ghosties. I believe so hard in them. I'm so mad at you for calling them that. <laughs> not gonna hunt you know what I realized? You know what I realized about ghosties? <laughs> ghosties is that if they're if ghosts exist, they are probably naked. Because why would you not be if you're a ghost? I'd be like, do do do. I'm shaking my junk at you. You can't even see me. I don't know if it works like that. I'm like, cool. Up, do you believe in them? Uh, yeah, I do believe them. I have come across a few, um, myself. And so, but I'm a weird, well, I think yeah, I am a weirdo. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Sure. Let's get back to ghosts. Can more we? about who I am. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I, I have had a couple times where I felt a ghost try to communicate me and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> Wait, what? you gave him a hand? You gave the older guys a hand? You can't do that. They'll throw a face at you. Has seems has not not been an issue yet. <gasps> Apparently ghosties are listening here now, so maybe it will and I will keep you updated if yeah. it becomes an issue. I bet but there's a ghost grabbing his crotch within feet of us and we just can't he thinks it's so funny. I don't think it, so it works funny. like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just come right out and say it. <laughs> I don't think if there are such things as ghosts, they're not like grabbing their crotch. They're not they're not it's they are mocking us with their ghosty genitals so much <laughs> that makes me never want to die because how fucking horrible would that be it'd be so fun grab your crotch at people it'd be so fun well, I think you'd never be hungry you'd never be tired and you could oh. just grab your junk at anyone you wanted that annoyed you because you get to eat food well that's true but i mean you would never you would never suffer for want of things okay you just fly around and you'd sit wherever you want and sure said okay. <laughs> okay. okay 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 i'll go with you down that road <laughs> so wait what ghosts have you seen well how have they tried to communicate okay one time uh i was staying with my friend in New York and um, she, I think it's Stuyvesant Village those uh, that was the first time I've been to New York it was I think 06 or something like that mm-hmm. and I had heard how small apartments are but because hers was this like post-war and she got because her grandparents gave it to her basically it's just huge it wow. was this huge Ooh, that's the beautiful like on um, Friends where they inherited an yeah. apartment and you're like no one lives there yeah, no one crazy. could ever have yeah. place it was something that crazy of like they played 1200 oh my god a month for like a two bedroom with a huge living room that's oh. friends yeah yes, i was exactly. like wow um so the last night i was or the i think it was the last night i was there i slept in um the the girls whose grandparents she got it from her grandparents mm-hmm. her grandfather uh, was put in a home so she just kind of like slipped yeah. in basically <laughs> um to get that great rent good for her and so i just I, I stayed in her room for the first time that night and um that night um i i I put in my uh, my iPod, my earbuds, and I and I remember I went to sleep. Um, I left the light on, and um, I I remember waking up, just eyes opening. I felt something to the right of me, and I had my glasses off, and I felt a figure to the right of me. I felt <gasps> that she was. I knew somehow that she was a woman. She was wearing a lot of uh layers and i i just knew what she was i knew instinctively and i went "Uh -uh, uh-uh uh-uh and i put (gasps) the covers up and i said "Uh uh-uh and i've done this multiple times in my life but this is the perfect example where i go "Mm, no and i went back to sleep and in the morning i talked to the girl the granddaughter i was like um 
Where'd your grandma die? She's like in that room. <gasps> oh my god! Oh. And it mu- I mean, I this is what I put together is that she's probably like, "Who are you? Why are you in?" Yeah, you're not my granddaughter. Where's my granddaughter? Oh, like god. she's investigating. Yeah. What if she was racist? <laughs> that's also a possibility now we're thinking about a time this is like when was the war oh <laughs> like, no what if a racist falter guy tried to mad dog you and you gave her the hand i mean it's a possibility I, she could be within me right now i should probably do ayahuasca to exercise her out oh my god i love it <laughs> what have you taught her a lesson about tolerance I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> also i love I like, gays yeah um, don't even ask- start with me <laughs> Did you ask her, Was were you like, was your grandma really into layering? Was she a bohemian type? Did you say, oh, like, yeah. what did she wear? Was your grandma Stevie Nicks? For real. I mean, <laughs> it was as if she took a bunch of blankets. Like, it was like, mm-hmm. she had all these blankets. Yeah. Oh my like God, a like, funeral like, shroud. Like, like the way we're sitting under a bunch of blankets right now. <gasps> you guys. But yeah, I don't, but I don't desire to communicate with ghosts. That's but you believe that, that they do. exist. Well, yeah, because this is not the first time. Mm-hmm. I have ghost stories too, but I'm still like, don't believe it. You're still denying them. Well, the thing is, you know, all the radio waves you talk about, well, also our brains do a lot more stuff than we're aware of. That's what Absolutely. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think there's all, and someone I was talking to, um, I was talking to someone about how the next like leap in an evolutionary sense from human mm-hmm. for humans will be like some sort of telepathic like certainty and communication that way. Like I we've agree. evolved in so many ways, but in, in the absence of that, we just have technology. We just have like, I'm going to telepathically communicate via this cell phone to your cell phone. Well, I don't think telepathy and ghosts have anything to do with each other. Really? No, I, I think bringing back to the idea of the radio yeah. uh, as an example of talking about even with um, you know I, I'm I have already mentioned ayahuasca, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but that you know when you think about turning a channel and stuff, we we do have um, in our nerves already and in, in our brains mm-hmm. receptors that we don't quite understand mm-hmm. what form. As you know, we don't use all of our brain, mm-hmm. but I think there are different forms of consciousness. Totally. And so now, if we go further and we talk about the soul. And we talk about, I mean, you know, then we can connect that to when we die, you know, and then we can get spiritual. It can go, it can, and and I I almost wonder if we're figuring out this technology and we're, we're understanding the, the um, words for technology so that we can start to understand how our brains work. So we can go, okay, well now I have a reference point to kind of describe the unknown and how my the inner workings of my brain. That yeah, but sense, what if? Yeah. But what if those biological uh, capacities we have just atrophy because of technology? Like we're That's a good point like too. we don't use our legs as much because we have cars. Do you know what I mean? Right, like right, the right. Same, the same way, and we suffer for it, but we also benefit. So what if it's the same kind of thing? And what if there? What if there are ghosties that escape your bodies, <laughs> just like those waves? And if, I think if we keep denying them. I think one day people will find out like like we understand the body so much more than we used to. We used to think like, oh, you have a, a, a humor in you that needs to be yeah. tapped. Yeah. And I think we'll, we'll say, can you believe we didn't believe that ghosties existed and we denied them? And now we now we have the technology. We understand things. They're all around us in this <laughs> apartment building that we're in right now. Yeah, we're in my apartment. And um, I almost didn't move in because everyone who has heard of this apartment knows that it's haunted. So I was like, really? hell no. I was about to sign a lease. I was moving from a place in Silver Lake that was um, that had a lot of gang activity and both my neighbors were shot. And so I was like, oh, I should move before I get shot, I guess. And then I almost signed a lease and someone said there are tons. of It's so haunted. And then so I almost didn't move in. Then I realized that like, ghosts don't have guns. So I'd probably be safer here regardless. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but everyone who's heard of this place is just it's a known fact. And Dustin told us today that apparently John Lennon used to stay Stay somewhere in this apartment building. Top floor. That's Top floor. Where he stayed when he was in LA. Like summer, like endless summer. Yeah, like Los Feliz Manor. He just stayed <gasps> on the top floor. I need, where do you, I want to find I want to find some history on this, but I also kind of don't because I know that people were murdered in this place. Do you guys watch uh, people were murdered everywhere? Do you guys watch um, Long Island Medium? If you're watching no. that, oh my god, no! But I want to take a picture of her into like a supercuts and just be like, "Give me this and oh, see what they do say." It. It's like she a has a blonde white white helmet. Oh, she's amazing. But I mean, I believe that though. So why don't I? Be- I believe that. Speaking, can I say? Speaking of um, makeovers, can we talk about? Can we have two seconds of girly slumber party? Let's about beauty, talk yes, girly beauty stuff, please. You want to talk look- about? Girl- Ghosts, or <laughs> um, you look twelve. Yeah. And I think, and speaking of immortality, I'm pretty sure that uh, you're immortal. Ooh. What do you use on your stupid skin to make it look so good, <laughs> bitch? Sweet bitches, I brought a knapsack filled oh my <laughs> with my evening ritual. Can you give skincare us- is huge for me, you guys? It's like apparently, I, I'm very like my t- my sisters 
like when they visited me recently, they wanted to go uh, lay out a lot. I'm like, what? I love laying Why out. do you know? But your skin. What about your skin? I don't know when. I, I I just kind of realized like oh my I love I like my skin it's really nice I want to keep it this way I don't want to be chewy word um, <laughs> can I tell a cautionary tale of my friend's aunts yeah. yes you know the ants on the Simpsons the yeah two Iguana ladies yeah um they were like that he had he had two sister ants like that mm-hmm. they tanned with Pennzoil <gasps> like ten weight forty you yeah. should see them they look like leather my mom couches. did Crisco my no. they were, my mom was young that's like the thing oh. yeah they look they look like a Not tanned right. hide they oh. look like a buckskin vest ah. with hair it's amazing oh. so no no laying out for God's I, sakes everyone I ever, ever, ever like once uh, once every month <laughs> no no <laughs> God I love it so what much. do you just tell us what you moisturize with okay for god's sake what did we you need bring to know. what did you bring for and this is and this is applicable to boys too i went on a date with a guy yes. recently and i was and he was a douchebag but his skin was amazing <laughs> and i was i was like if you weren't so pretentious i would really want to spend more time with you but he had the most beautiful skin so really boys boys this is for you <laughs> this matters i okay and also i'm like I was so annoying to my sisters because, like, before they went to bed, I'm like, "Did you wash all your makeup? Oh off? yeah, <gasps> did I'm you wash all your makeup? Oh, I need you to live with me and do that. It's so important. You have to you wash your face every night. There's a line that I like very much. You can get it at Sephora. It's okay. called Cora's. It's a um, Greek line. It's also um, I try my bestest not to use brands that are tested on animals oh, that are cruelty free. But I also, I also it is important for me. To for it to be effective, so the the this line succeeds in both. Oh. Can I say though, as as girls and as human beings, and as a slumber party, that when someone is fresh out of a breakup or is having a self esteem crisis, mm-hmm. it is your duty as a friend to take pictures of them that look hot. Sure, use a filter on them and then Great. post them on a network and tag them in it so yeah. that other people can see that they are having a good time. Yeah, do hot. do Sierra. I think that's it gives a go great even oh, skin tone. Okay. Oh, good to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, spite, again, spiteful. But have you ever done that? Have you ever, have you ever in like a moment of low self esteem been like, someone take a hot picture of me, please? Someone yeah, put that up somewhere. Come on. I, you know Why what? Not? You know what happens when I do that with Allie? I'll take, I take a lot of those photos for Allie, and then I'll ask her to do one, and she's like, and I'll be like smiling and she's like I'm, just, I'm filming haha and like laugh at me do you know that thing that your fucking asshole friends do when they're like I'll take a photo of you and they just are filming you make stupid fucking faces Allie you did that to me so hard oh, I've got some good ones You're such but I do post cute photos of you it's true I took a I took a photo of Georgia wearing my glasses I took my glasses off and she put them on and I took a picture and I was like and I thought in my head that's a great picture she's gonna look at this and say I'm so cute and I handed her the phone and she went I'm so cute I was like oh that's my Georgia oh, I don't know. I don't know. Come on. it's true we know each other well enough also to know each yeah. other's angles yeah <laughs> yeah just like and like fix each other's bangs so, oh yeah it's wonderful that yeah, yeah it's helpful the video recording thing is a dick move i'm gonna put them i'm gonna I'm montage them all together also, that that be great. do you look at i'm the ugliest person when i'm sleeping i mean i don't know no one's ever taken a, if no one's ever if you don't know being scott's never taken a photo of you that means you look fine when you sleep but oh. i have multiple photos that my fiance took of me while i'm sleeping and i am so hideous what? No, it's Georgia not. is hilarious when she sleeps. She's Georgia goes into a zone. Georgia goes yeah. away from us. She leaves this <laughs> astral plane and she's gone. And in her place is just this sprawled out. She looks like a sprawled out squirrel. And she <laughs> she's just like mouth agape. She's totally gone. I might be drooling. She's totally drooling. And so I have a lot of photos of Georgia because we travel a lot together. So I have yeah. photos of her on planes. Oh, I love on it. On trains and in automobiles. Cars. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't Those aren't two pillows. What? Thank you, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys! I um, skincare wise, yeah. I have okay. an idea okay. for Talk a girl me. date. <gasps> okay, Korean day spa. Yes, yes, yes. yes. and yes. yes. I've never been to one. I've never I been know. to one. I know. What? Neither. You guys? Are you? You guys are okay with nudity, right? Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's. I mean, it's you're gonna see rolls. <laughs> Wait, my you're own see nudity folds, or other people's nudity? Both, friend. I'm fine. <laughs> both. I'm cool. Both. I feel like it be, would they're be make older Korean ladies. They keep it Dude, tight. I go to but the they y. scrub down. I go to the Y and I see lots of things okay, happening. Okay. Now picture okay. a Korean lady in somewhat of a man made stream, just squatting there, really making sure that her bottom is what? smooth. Really? <laughs> I'm scared. But it's awesome. Can I here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible if the first time I go to a Korean day spa, much like karaoke or uh, something else that's sure. public and embarrassing, okay. someone gives me a substance oh. or like a Xanax sure. or 
or we go out for we go we go have one glass of whiskey ahead of Absolutely. time. I feel like that would be a situation that I would be very very uncomfortable in for the first couple of moments. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm one of those people who don't care. My problem is I'm afraid that I'm going to be staring at people's nipples to you watch, are. or I'm going to be like, oh, that's oh, it's, weird. It's not the nipples oh, that you'll be staring at. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And I'm afraid I'm going to be like a weird, like I'm going to be a weird visual predator. Where I'm going to want to stare though, at everyone. There'll be so many. It's not like there's that one naked body. It, it'll you'll become desensitized. That's by, what I mean. Yeah. Do you know, know what? You know what freaks me out more than naked people are germs. And the, my, I can't. Oh. I, I like I can't take a bath in my sh- in my shower bathtub. Yeah. Be- and even in my own because it, I, it's disgusting. Germs. Well, they have very strong rules, but yeah, I can still understand. Like they're they're very. You, I mean, because this this is um really a big part of the Korean culture. And yeah. You see, just like that's. I mean, look at Korean skin though. Like even the older ladies, they keep it tight. Yeah. Like they, they, they. Have you ever caught anything at a Korean spa? <gasps> no one's ever caught anything. No, not that. Okay. Yeah, but they're very much like you have to take a shower before you do this. Okay. Do that. But yeah, if you're going into you know you're going into like a hot tub or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's oh. there's it's a bit of a poon soup. I would sure. Poon soup. Anyone want to go for some shabu shabu? Poon poon shabu shabu cool and poon soup. No, uh, that's that. a nod to Howard Kramer, Dragon Boy Sway. I love it. He has an amazing song called Poon Soup. Oh my god. Where two okay. lesbian lovers. That's how they clean their uh, their <laughs> accoutrements. Love it. That they, guy. They make you poon soup. How is that? I I see him and I. I can't picture him saying stuff like that because he really no is he just terrible well i guess maybe and he all he, he also tries to keep it like under wraps even in who charted too like he's like he won't he thinks that i'm the disgusting one i am disgusting <laughs> but you know he gotta he's, he's trying to play like he's like a little more uh you know not as crude classy as a little classier oh, the man who wrote and performs poon soup, poon soup. <laughs> it seems like um it seems like in los angeles a lot of people have writing partners comedy partners podcast partners yeah and that that's i feel like uh people need more training in their youth about like how to really nurture a friendship into something that you can monetize <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we totally mon- mon- we've Allie and I have monetized our friendship. I mean, yeah, we're like, we, we really like each other. Let's so it should be taught, taught in Montessori or something. Yeah, like yeah. Really should. There should be a whole monetizing your friendship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't just don't just hold hands while you walk to the bus. Also, get a podcast and make some fucking money. That's so funny. How can you get the world to sign on and pay for this friendship? How yeah, you, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. How but, did you um, do it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> how did you How did you hook up for Who Tried It? And tell us how long you've been doing Who Tried It as well. We have been doing it. I think our next show will be the eighty first show. Wow. So, and there hasn't been. We haven't missed a week. Holy crap! Since the beginning. Um, and Howard and I have known each other since I was probably like. Scott, since Scott and I first started dating, mm-hmm. which would be around like 19 or 20s when I met Howard and uh, his uh, and Chip Pope at the same time. Mm-hmm. But then just separately, Howard was looking to do a show uh, with Earwolf when Earwolf first started. And uh, Scott thought that Howard's idea, and it's Howard's idea, the, the podcast completely, that it needed um, kind of like a... Uh, uh, somebody who gave information out, who could clearly say <laughs> what the songs were, <laughs> like like a who Robin could, to his uh, to turn. his Howard Stern, yeah. exactly. And so, um, oh yeah, I saw you guys the night before. It was when Jason Wilner had that um four local oh, party. Oh Jesus. Uh, that was the night Wilner. before. Our friend Jason Wilner threw a party uh, last, it was December the 5th. Yes. Um, of of 2010, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, I have a crazy memory for dates. Um, <laughs> And it was uh, right before Four Loco got banned. Yeah. So it was the last remaining case. He bought like $300 worth of Yeah, Loco. I mean, now it's back again, but they've um, uh, they've yeah. made it, the, they've changed the formula. Yeah. So it's yeah. not as... Um, uh, yeah, this was Coke murderous. Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That was a yeah, crazy That was party. the equivalent to like a comedy Coke party oh, because like God. everyone was so sweaty and tweaked. Yeah. <laughs> Loud and like talking loudly. Yeah. Really, everyone was way too angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw someone uh, boiling it on the stove to drink as a tea, oh and I was like, God. shit's gonna get I'm weird. I'm almost certain that was uh, <laughs> Michael Penn. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. I've that actually was- heard this, uh, heard about this party on other podcasts. Oh, um, like, I mean, it was a night to remember. It and, was. and the following day, even, I mean, it was like late afternoon. I still was the first time Howard was explaining to me what we we're going to do. We were just going to try it and see how it goes. And I was like, well, let's walk around the block. And we were walking around. He's like, can you slow down? Oh, and my I'm God. Like, okay. Okay. You're still fucking high. <laughs> Did so... you do your first episode the next day? Yeah. Because I remember on Twitter, 
Walner for Loco was a hashtag yeah. and I checked in and no one was out of bed before four. <laughs> Everyone's wasn't. like, I feel like death. Like I feel like I, I drank had the weirdest Drano. dreams I've ever had in my life. I didn't I didn't put on pants I mean, the next day. They it's fluoresc I mean it's Windex. Yeah. It's flavored Windex. Yeah. That's what it worst. is. Yeah. Same consistency, <laughs> same coloring. Ugh. I would do it all over again though Is that weird? I would I, would I totally went home that night And played ukulele To like five in the morning <laughs> But alone And then I just didn't The next day was a wash I was like this day doesn't exist Sometimes you need that What's your What's your hangover Like MO Like when you have a hangover Oh I don't want to go any Yeah it's the same thing Without the ukulele <laughs> Well Allie Allie is really weird in that When she has a hangover She likes to punish herself She'll go for like a crazy hike Or like a run To like Whoa. To like I'll, burn it off I was raised Catholic So I do this weird Atonement thing Where Damn. I'll go drink Like a I'll drink a five hour energy And go on like a seven mile run And just get it out of me Like an wow. elegant exorcism I'll be like That never happened I'm writing myself I'm writing this wrong It's weird And, and I'll just sit at home And watch um, Yeah True crime shows Oh good And mm-hmm. eat gross It's like an excuse To eat gross food Yeah this I, For me it would be uh, Catch up uh, On ancient aliens <laughs> oh, alien shit! Actually, I have a alien shit. What do you? What back- would you eat? Like, what's your? If you could eat anything on your hangover, I was gonna say Let's we should get kitchen raid. Kitchen raid. Yeah. As long as we're slumber partying, Let's if you this. could eat anything, oh, ramen. Really? Are, are, are you kidding? Absolutely. Oh, um, daiku ka tutiara. Daiku ya. There's cool up vilai sock. That's how you say my name. How do you say the ramen place downtown in Los Angeles? Daiku ya, I think. Daiku. It's got a lot of K's and a lot of Y's, but it's this the best, most delicious ramen. There's an egg in the middle. I was gonna say, is there an egg in it? That well, that'll beat your hangover. Like. And when it's spicy, I get it. It's spicy and gives yeah, me. And then, it. if you ever have leftovers, which I never do, and you put them in the fridge, the next day it's solid because it's oh, all totally. pork fat. It's <laughs> just liquid pork fat when you have it hot. It's so good. Why? What do you have? Oh man, I don't even. What do I have? And what's your most indulgent like food? What's your? If you could, it's like if you could eat anything. Well, I know when it's like I'm like I I need like home food. Like I need food. Like. I need to it to comfort me. I need it to be my blankie. It's usually some sort of noodle. It'll be like pot thai chicken. Um, I'll make like I make this crazy mac and cheese. Like it's, it's you know. Is there four loco in it? Oh, <laughs> even though so even though you grew up in a Baptist or not grew up, but you lived in a Baptist home for a while, you 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 still ate authentic. Well, Maybe. because I, I lived with them uh, uh, when my mom got on, on her feet, mm-hmm. then we moved away. Okay. So, yeah, like it was mainly an Asian, Asian, Lao, Thai food. Nice. And my mom owned a Thai restaurant. Oh, my what? God, that's awesome. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and that's why I, I, oh. that's why I know how to make. So you stuff. actually know how to make yeah. pad Thai instead of getting like the Annie's noodles. That you yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if I don't have time, I'll just go to the local Thai place and stuff. <sighs> Love it. Because the thing about Thai food and Chinese food and all Asian foods, is it's like, do you have time to prep? Yeah. The actual cooking is like no problem. It's like, can you cut this? Can you, you know, all that, chop this? That's a good note. And What's your chicken pot pie? Really? I chicken did, pot pie. I made chicken pot pie last night. <gasps> you did? Yeah, it was my first go. It was amazing. I made it last week. It was so good. Can I tell you guys something? Yeah. I know she had that because I saw it on Instagram. Uh-huh. Hey. See what a great time she had with the first, like, yeah. She didn't invite me. I texted her. I was like, hey, you and your husband look like you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come over? <laughs> Can I come over and hang out with you guys? And you're offering solo cups. <laughs> the worst. I'm eating a red wine right yeah, now. Yeah, like, it was the perfect timing of when you put it in your mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm having solo cups. <laughs> I, have, I have one more question. In our slumber party okay. bonanza, and this is um, you may not know this off the top of your head, but um, it's a segment called "Fuck That." Okay, and um, it's one thing that really pisses you off right now, and then one thing that you love so much you would fuck that. Fuck something that pisses me off right now. Am I pissed off? Pissed you know, off? I have a um, I'm I'm outwardly very happy, and mm-hmm. truly I am one of I'm generally happy, mm-hmm. but. I've been doing a lot of work on myself and really being honest with the fact that I'm rage filled and that I have a, I have a, uh, I have a big account of, uh, just anger that I, I just deposit, but I don't. Wow. <laughs> when does it come out? Driving? Are you? I do my best. I, I'm, I, I view myself as very problematic. And, um, <laughs> you and, seem like you have your shit so together. You're like the nicest, sweetest, funniest person. But you're not like a nice, so nice that people would walk on you. Like yeah, a not annoying like nice. yeah. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is compliment time with Allie and Georgia. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Boost your self-esteem. Welcome to our shanty pillow fort. 
<laughs> Let's talk about you. Truth for it. <laughs> so you have some rage. Yeah, I have some anger and I don't know what to do. And I'm really good at pushing it down. And I'm so afraid of it of erupting too. But I've really learned how to. And I'm trying to figure out ways to sort of kind of bring it to light or like healthfully therapy yeah oh i do therapy okay. oh, i do therapy guys I, I had a shaman at my house <laughs> two weeks yes. ago i went to a psychic a week before are you serious i i go to an astrologist i oh I, went, I did 30 weeks in this like crazy israeli M- grinberg method on wellness guys i've done things shit. i've you, done things i feel like somewhere in there there's some sort of magical enema that we'll talk about when <laughs> this is done how much money do you think you've spent on trying to cure your rage <laughs> what my rage know. my mistrust of myself uh, my uh, i think that maybe i'm a monster um <laughs> <laughs> lycanthropy yeah, like yes, Anthropy. Uh, um, um, I have a great therapist, if you ever need. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I, I I'm go okay. every week. <laughs> Thank you. get you. sick of yours ever. <laughs> Thank you. He's gay, because I'm team gay. Oh, team gay. nice. <laughs> TG. What's up, Dr. Rick? <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything that you're like, fuck that? Fuck that. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm having a hard time thinking of something like, let's fuck that. Oh, I hate, uh, no. <laughs> Nothing? What about the fact that um, Santa Monica is now like fucking with their parking meters so that like it just screws everyone over? Oh, They're doing, doing a thing where when you pull out, when you put a dollar or whatever, three dollars in or whatever for an hour, at an hour, you can't put more money in. You have to fucking leave. It has a sensor in the ground. Whoa. Yep. Yeah. Big brother. Jeez. Big brother. Fuck that. Big brother. Fuck what about, that. What's something you like, Georgia, so much that you would fuck that? Oh, red vines, I guess. Oh, you know what I went, I had last night I went and saw, um, what is it, Safety Not? Guaranteed. Oh, was it good? It was so cute. Yeah, the the creepy like time travel movie with with uh, uh, Aubrey Plaza, Plaza and and Mark, Mark Duplass, <gasps> who I have a big crush on. Yeah, would you fuck that? I would fuck that. Sorry, Colin, I love you. Um, I would totally. He's so cute. Yeah, married as fuck though. Yeah. I would like to look up his picture. What oh, do you think so about cute. that? Yeah, it was a good movie. Yeah, and uh, he's also in uh, the league. The league, yeah, with our friends Nicole and yeah and Paul Shear. Oh, I saw. Um, I'd fuck a. Uh, uh, I fuck Wes Anderson. Like I really? like what he does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I would. I would like to fuck his uh, his uh, color scaping. Yeah. Uh, his his sense of whimsy. His like yeah. the you know his, the world that he creates. Like I, I recently saw. Um, why can't I think of the name of the movie? Moonrise uh, Kingdom. Moonrise yeah, yeah. Kingdom. I like what he does. Is it good? I heard yeah. things. I liked it. I I I like the actors. Uh, those two kids I think were great. The lead kid. To me, is a combination of our friends Josh Fadum and Alan McLeod. I love Josh together in one, <laughs> yeah. in one little Perfect. body. That's you, you actually might be the girl. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> Allie! <laughs> well, then. Allie's the girl. Um, like that. But yeah, I I like what he does. Okay, I fuck I don't him. Know. I, I fuck him. Uh, f- uh, and his uh, cinematographer, yeah, his DP, a DP, his DP. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Um, they are talented motherfuckers. Yeah, what, 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 what about you, Ellie? Um, I think one thing that is fuck that is um is when George and I get called the girls. Oh, in, what do you mean? In business emails. When we get called well, girls when we we have we have this weird thing because we're two women that work together. Sometimes we'll be addressed as well. The girls want final say on these cuts on a show they created, but we, the network can't give them calling that. us girls is really calling us girls really pisses me yeah. off. Or Not the like ladies that, sometimes women. we get we we sometimes are up against. Or why like, not just Allie and Georgia? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's something about there's a certain tone about like the girls want things that other people who, that. Who, would create something would want, <laughs> but because it's it's like this weird little condescension. And whenever I read it, I always like i don't know i just twitch with uh, with um with anger but um <laughs> one thing i would f- totally you guys you know what i would fuck hard huh? so hard in fact i feel like i've keep tapping that literally is froyo i tap yeah. froyo so hard yeah there is we live in los Feliz, and there's this place called froyo life oh, froyolo froyolo big time you only live once <laughs> yeah. and um i go there to the point where it's daily almost and I always load up with a ton of whipped cream Ooh, all kinds of toppings whipped cream sounds oh, not I good love it. I love it and then on Wednesdays if you guess the right amount of ounces you get your froyo for free, for free which is like three dollars <laughs> bonus but um, I go there enough where I'm so close wow. to guessing wow. <laughs> and luckily they switch out their underage employees all the time so like they don't really see that so I'm it's there tough. that's an age where turnover is going to happen <laughs> but I, you know when someone's like let's go out for let's catch up over coffee and I always think like go froyo let's so catch you, up go, you froyo. do froyo which is a, a, a lighter dessert and then you go even lighter with an airy 
whipped cream on top of it. Yeah, so good. whipped cream. Oh, whipped. whipped. I do a little bit of frozen yogurt, to be honest, and then I do a shit ton of whipped cream. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like a whipped cream vehicle. A little bit, because that's what I really want to eat. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm all about. And then I put tons of cereal on it. And I was like, yeah. this is the best. And then and then there's this one place that's for your life place in, on Hillhurst that has the worst, trashiest magazines. Oh, yeah. Piles of them. Oh, yeah. So you can flip through an in-touch and then you just leave it there. It never even has to come in your home. Oh, wow. It's the best. I but would fuck that so hard. You were talking about that cereal, though. Makes me think of the Mama Fuko cereal milk oh, yeah. ice cream. And I would I would shove that into all of my holes. Oh, right? wow. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that right now. Sexy. And I'm warm in this tent. And that would be <laughs> right. so... Such a summer treat. <laughs> right now. That sounds <laughs> fabulous. A summer, summer baby, treat. Yeah. <laughs> Soak your underwear in there for a while. Yes. <laughs> Freeze your underpants. Freeze your underpants. But I, I would also... Okay. Um, I, I like... I mean, fuck that about... Like, I hate that subtle... The subtle thing you were talking about, the girls, like girls. the girls, like I, I want, I'm going to co-sign on your, do you get that a <laughs> like lot? That. Do you, it, it, I don't, I, I don't get it a lot, but when I do it, it enrages yeah. me. Mm-hmm. It enrages me. Yeah. Cause like, but yeah. also too, because I view myself as a boss. Totally. And to, you know, to uh, whether that's true or not, <laughs> it's just people trying to put you in your place. I have a hard time. Yeah. I have. A, okay. And also I have a hard time with authority, but if I don't feel <laughs> <laughs> that. As you I'm should. being respected or if that that I, I've been very become more and more sensitive of just like just generally in society like just this kind of subtle girls as mm-hmm. an example yep. or just like I just I don't accept it good yeah. can you accept imagine it. can you imagine if um two guys with like a podcast or a show had boys. like hey boys we uh the boys want to look at this final cut on something but uh we're gonna send it to the network instead <laughs> it would rage it would rage it makes me it, ma- it makes me turn into a werewolf a little bit yeah well now we brought it back around to the beginning to yeah. the werewolf to I like we have to we have to sign out for our, it's yeah it's time to slumber in this slumber it. party yeah before the full moon comes bed. out what thank you so much for being with us cool up this has thank been so you. much fun who charted and and what's your website um go to earwolf.com earwolf.com cool i will i will what other homework are you working on um i'm taking so many instagram photos (laughs) i am cool of it's true awesome like the hell out of those (laughs) you heart the fuck out of those you guys i do i guess i will i will thank you i'll do it thank you well it's time to i guess it's time to go night night thank you so much for being our first ever guest we love you i'm honored we're gonna put pictures of cool up in her onesie on the website (laughs) hit that (laughs) Good night. 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 Thanks so much for listening to Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia. You can find us online at A-L-I-E and Georgia. We're on Twitter. We're on Tumblr. Gently stalk us, you guys. Gently stalk us. You can also find us on the Feral Audio page. You can donate to podcasts. It's all volunteer-based, so all of these podcasts come out from um, people who are laboring out of love. So do donate to keep things on the air. You can also buy things on Amazon through that link and then it kicks back to us. So, so cool. And get a cookbook. Okay, subscribe to us on iTunes and if you like it, leave a review. It helps us in the charts. We'll see you guys next week. Next Slumber Party is scheduled for Thursday. Support your favorite artists, help pay for their show's production, and keep your favorite shows free. Visit fairlogio.com for other original shows and learn about our community of artists that help make this collective possible. Thank you for listening to this podcast. This outro features the music of the fancy, we are the fancy, don't it?